See, I'm just doing the press in, and I just got the edges first, tying in to the single shell awning. So I pressed in a lot there. I just go to make the base plate, dab at a time. Just want to make sure this is integrated into the shell, and you have a nice smooth base for the next one. And the reason why we do small tiles at a time like this is because when you brush and press the surface with the second shell and then the glaze coat, it, it puts pressure on the shell below. So if you let it sit too long, it's going to crack this integration there, which will crack everything. And so small tiles, because they're funner too. And it doesn't cost you any time. Like if anything is suspect it's too thin. Stick in that base there. Take care of your edges. And start building it. And it's good to start building at a corner to your connection seam so you can fill it. This is a wet connection seam so I don't have to push too hard and work it back and forth. But on this one, we push in and work it back and forth so it actually sinks down. By the way, this is, even though this seems stiff, it's really easy to spread because it doesn't have that lava rheology has a foam rheology so this is the plaster you want this is probably the most perfect plaster i've ever worked with <laughs> thanks Bonnie. really it's really fucking awesome yeah i was did. scared but i tried to keep it really dry the whole time yeah no it's perfect i mean it seems a little dry spreading but it's not bad i wouldn't want to i would much rather have this than any kind of lava You know, I mean, I could worry about it and think, oh, I better pin it down, but since it's so nice, I'll be done with it before I even need to do that. So this is the thickening layer. Just making sure we have thick edges. a little thicker than usual because this is important structural connection detail take much of the glue because once it starts mixing with the surface it becomes like a paste that you work over the whole deal. This is going to be hard to trial because it's a convex curve but we love convex curves. And con con Convex curve going this way and a concave curve going this way. It's like a Pringles potato chip. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it were the other side of the Pringles potato chip, it would be very easy. So it's... Only if Pringles had ripple potato chips. <laughs> oh, I know. And we're going to put ripples in this. This is cool. That's the next step. So, it takes a little pressure and always pressing out so you're not peeling it off of your connection zone. And just a your surface, you're pressing the surface mostly not over pressing the underneath because it's already starting to set so this is the whole reason 
you overpress it and you flexed it, it might make a crack there. And in the edges, I take that soupy stuff and get it to a connection zone. Get it to a dry area. I'm pressing onto it, onto that dry connection zone instead of, there, that's it. Okay. Ta-da! How many minutes was that? 